Peter! Hello! Have you got ours? Yeah. That's happy, eh? Morning. Morning. You have to hand it to him. Tackling all the worst jobs that nobody else wants. Morning. Morning. Daft, really. I know quite a few by sight and never get beyond good morning. They don't speak English all that well. And I can't see myself learning, what is it? Punjabi. Honey, his dad speaks English. More posh than we do. More posh than what we do? Well, that wouldn't take much doing, would it? Thanks. Everybody's extra keen to see the papers this morning. I'm not surprised. You're early, man. No trains for 20 minutes. I had to get out of the house. We're in. Mm-hmm. Been late three mornings this term, so they stopped me paper round. I'm broke. Well, you know what they say? Best things in life are free. Playing football, spotting trains. No charge for that. Fat lot of trains I'm going to spot in the next 20 minutes. Fat lot of trains you're going to spot full stop if Mr. Beechin has his way. Anyway, I want to buy a record player, don't I? Who's at the number one this week? The Tornadoes, Telstar. Telstar. Yeah, I know Telstar. Like the Russian Sputnik. Flies all around the world sending you messages you don't want, do you? Hello, Peter. Are you well today? OK, Tom. Is your dad home yet? Very soon. I'm cooking him his breakfast. Korean rice and chapatis. For breakfast? I beg your pardon, his dinner, isn't it? After work, yeah. Does your mum not live with you? Not yet. She will come soon with my younger brother and sisters. You want to try a chapati? Uh, no, thanks. I stop off at my grandma's for a bit of toast when I finish my round. They are very good. Although I say so myself. Go on, then. But I don't like foreign food. Please yourself. But your meat isn't foreign, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Hey, Winston. Can you lend us a pen? I haven't done my physics homework. I mean enough bother for coming back to me geography already. Yeah. Education's more important than Chelsea or even Ellen Shapiro. Who says? Not much point in doing homework if we're all dead by next week. Okay. Come on, man. You think you've got worries? Well, you come from over there, don't you? Over where? Well, the West Indies. Cuba and that. That's what my mum and dad are so worried about. I come from Jamaica, Roger. And you don't get much closer to Cuba than that. And I'm telling you, man, if your mum and dad is worried about Russian missiles sitting on the American doorstep, I'm worried about them sitting in my own backyard. Lazy and careless, oh, Roger. How am I going to keep it from his dad? Something's wrong. Well, maybe not his fault. His dad caught up in smoke. Like the rest of us. What? Hey, Mum, do you like my hat? We're having a Halloween party at Brownies next week. Fancy dress. And what are you going to be, Beverly Love? An ice cream cone? A witch. I'll paint it black after school. Cut me an ice cream cone this way up. Whatever it is, I hope she's alive next week to wear it. News time. Susan, stop that sort of talk. Frightened, Mum. We may be in for all out nuclear war. The end of the world. Susan, if you'd ever sat in an air raid shelter with bombs falling all around you, you'd know that no amount of worrying you could do would change things. The Cuban blockade. A showdown with Russia could come within 24 hours. President Kennedy said that Russian arms have turned Cuba into a clearly offensive base capable of delivering destruction into the heart of the United States. Russia's response to the presence of 40 American warships now forming the blockade has been to give serious warning that the world is being put to the brink of war. Oh, a state you. Of <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to make you jump. Oh, I'm that nervy. Oh, we are, eh? Let's just pray that Khrushchev won't be allowed to get away with it. Oh, I'm not nervous of him. It's my appointment card. I get these funny noises in my head. Nothing too serious then, love. Oh, no, no. It, it, this, this. 
Don't you think it has to be put a stop to? Be honest now. Uh, what has to be put a stop to? Well, there's hundreds of them coming in. Thousands everywhere you go. You walk down Balaclava Road, you might just as well be out there in Africa for all the white faces, you see. Mrs Burkitt, we asked them to come here when we were short of labour. And they're just the same as us, really, you know. They're not. They're not a bit like us. They eat peculiar. The women, they dress different. When you speak a civil word to them, they look at you as if you're round the twist. They don't speak our language, love. I dare say they find you as odd as you find them. Me? Odd? And if that's all that's worrying you, I suggest you listen into your wireless. But tomorrow we might be fighting World War Three, And atom bombs don't care what colour you are, Mrs Burkitt. Cuba and world fears grow as an American armada sails towards the island to counter the build-up of Soviet bases there. President Kennedy has made his intentions crystal clear. This generation learned from bitter experience that either brandishing or yielding to threats can only lead to war. Our hope now lies in the dismantling of the bases and removal of the missiles which have brought the world to the brink of catastrophe. Meanwhile, in Britain, control of immigration is one of the big questions of the moment. In the last ten months, over 57,000 chose to come from the troubled West Indies alone. How long have you been in Britain? Two years, seven months. Why did you come to Britain? Well, I come to sort of for a job to get some money to buy a house. Well, I think there's not enough housing for them, and half of them are coming over here without jobs. Consequently, they're making it very hard for our own people to find jobs. In a world of tension, there is obviously much to be said for taking shelter in our crowded island. You're the only person today that's put money into a savings account. Thanks. She's a miser, that Marco. Proper little screwed. She's made up her mind she's going to be rich when she grows up. If she grows up. Don't, don't say it. I saw this new dress. Nigger brown it was. Lovely and I thought, dash it all, I'll have it. I'm going to get my hair done and I'm going to persuade Jimmy to take me to a dinner dance at the Queen's. Well, might be my last chance. Don't say it. Oh, I'm that jittery. What with Susan walking around with a face like hey, doom? Send her around to me. She can listen to my worries for a change. I might just do that. And as for our Roger... What's wrong with him? Well, he's not worried about the future of mankind. But his schoolwork's gone right off. Eileen, I don't know how to say this, but... Well, do you think you could ask your Peter to steer clear of him for a while? Charming. If I weren't such a level-headed woman, John, I couldn't take exception to that. I mean, you're not blaming our Peter. It's steady on. Well, you heard what she said. No, but... Well, Roger's forever nipping round to Peter's for a minute, and he's gone a full two hours. I mean, it's just a different approach to bringing up children, that's all. Different approach? Stop it, you two. This is no time to be quarrelling. I'll tell Peter. He'll not like it, but if it gives Roger a chance to catch up, eh? On the off chance our world leaders will let us get on with our lives no. as normal. Well, at least we know what's going on this time. Not like in the war. I can remember there were times during the war where I'd sit and worry myself sick about Michael. I mean, they always said they were telling you the truth, but you never knew. Now you know only too well wireless, television. You can't avoid hearing about things. If we're all blown up tomorrow, you can bet there'll be a television camera there to cover it. Annie, you're coming out? Very well, until dark. Why only till dark? Not safe. Might get beaten up. Who's gonna do that? You see what I mean? Big Greg Wally and his gang, I expect. They do it to get noticed. Come on. Is it a sickness in Britain, Peter? Lighting on malls? Could be, I suppose. Does it bother you? Well, of course it bothers me. Not as much as Pucky. Pucky hurts. Really hurts. Oh, there's my good girl. No need to worry about you somehow. What's that you've got on your face? You look like a black and white minstrel. Have you been crying? Mummy. Oh, dear love, what's the matter? I got hit at school. Oh, yes, who hit you? 
Miss Dyson, in front of everybody. Oh, dear. On your hand, was it? Or oh, this one? Let me kiss it better. Now then, why did she hit you? She told me to sit next to Lloyd Mason. I wouldn't. She went mad. Who's he? A black boy in our class. Well, why couldn't you do as she said? There's no need to make a fuss, was there? Sharing a desk with a boy. You can't, Mum. Nobody speaks to you at playtime. It's a rule. A well, very silly rule, if you ask me. Any boy. If you've seen taking any notice of a boy in our class, you've had it for friends. You know why your teacher was upset with you, don't you? She thought you wouldn't sit next to Lloyd because he's coloured. Oh. But wasn't the reason, was it? Of course not. I don't care what colour people are, as long as they're girls. Oh, Beverly Love, what an idiotic mess. Oh, how do you think that poor boy felt? Well, tomorrow, I want you to go straight up to him. Ignore Pamela Mason and her crowd. And explain. And say you're sorry. Will you do that? <laughs> What do you want to come here for? Our weather can be dead dreary compared to yours. My father has warned me. He came three years ago, but we have shops and a hotel in Pakistan. I had to stay behind in charge to pay the workers, you know. You, the boss? It was hard. I was not getting my education. I don't understand your dad. He seems, well, rich. What does he want to do night shifts at the mill for? Pakistan is a very poor country. There's more money in it. All right, then, Pete. Oh, hi, Rog. Forgotten who your friends are, have you? Eh? Let's wait a minute. I'll see what he wants. What's he eating you? I said, forgotten who your friends are. Friends? What do you mean? We're supposed to be going to the first house pictures, are we? Yeah, but... Well, what are you doing out with him? Hey, just cos I need to pack... I mean... He's coloured. It don't mean a... He's all right, is he? Yeah, but I waited in and you didn't turn up. Yeah, well, if you want the truth, my mum said I had to cos you were slacking with your homework and I'd get a right clout if I came round. Oh, push off, Hodgkin. Push off yourself, Brady. You said they were right tough in holes like the grammar. Well, you were right, weren't you? Oh, good boy, you read. Good boy, you don't need tough in holes. Hey, Rodge. Rodge, come back. I didn't mean it. If I needed to see a specialist, I'd go. It's not your head. There's funny noises in it. Oh, honestly. Why not see the specialist and put your mind at rest? Look. I'm being sent to some foreign quack. I'll be witch-doctored and black magic, and then you'll be sorry. At Bradley General Infirmary. It's not right, Eileen. No, you're in luck. He booked to see Mr. Patel, the nose and throat man. He's an Indian. Avril says he's wonderful. He did Anthony's tonsils and adenoids and was absolutely charming, so there. What's happened to all the nice English doctors? That's what I'd like to know. Well, a lot went to Canada, places like that, didn't they? With the brain drain. And our National Health Service had been in a sorry state without people like Mr Patel willing to work in it. And all our West Indian nurses. Well, I'd as soon take pills. Why not you go home, Packy? I am going home. No, you're not. Your home's in India, ain't it? Why don't you go there? Excuse me, please. Your home's in India, where the Red Indians come from. Why don't you go there? My grandfather's home is in Pakistan. My home is in Bradley. We are Commonwealth citizens. This is our home. Yeah, but like, this is our home, eh? Yeah. Free country. I mean, this is our patch. It's like to get to your home. You got to come through my home. Excuse me, please. Right, get him, lad! Shall I switch on the TV? Yeah. No, no more television or radio. I've been following the news all day. Nearly finished. I hope Margot likes it. I hope she gets a chance to wear it. Where's Lawrence? 
at a Nalgo meeting. We had a row. What about? Me giving up work. You're giving up? The travelling saleswoman bit anyway. It isn't the money he earns enough. He says I'm a trained pharmacist. Why waste it and risk getting housewife blues? Well, I agree with him. So did you once. You don't know your luck with Lawrence. Not many men go along with women having careers and children. Susan, I don't believe in what I'm doing anymore. Dishing out pills for stress and depression, that's not the answer. Then there's the babies. Born without limbs, and worse. Born needing major surgery because their mothers took a drug I've been selling. But you're not responsible for that. I feel responsible. Next to war, it's the worst thing to have happened in my life. Next to war. I feel rotten. It's all right, I told you. Not you, you daft more. Annie. I left him on his own. He can fend for himself, can't he? Not a big Greg Wally and his gang around, he can. No one can fight his gang. I reckon we could. Not with fish like, but I reckon we could outthink him. What do you mean? Thinking. I reckon we could outthink him. Brains aren't just for doing your own work, you know. Anyway, wouldn't work. Not with Anif. What do you mean? Well, like, cover charging over the old top. I mean, he wouldn't like that, would he? Well, he's gonna have to like it, isn't he? What do you mean? Listen. Get back to the jungle! You stupid packet! Bash him, Greg! Quick! He does his homework. If he's not in his room, where is he? Calm down, Michael. I would never have told you if I thought you'd fly up the handle like this. You're saying I don't know what's important for my only son. I'm saying calm down. We're none of us in a fit state to settle anything reasonably at the moment. We're frightened and stronger, and if the worst comes to the worst, we ought to be drawing close and comforting each other, not quarrelling over little things. I'm going to find him, and when I do, he'll get such a leathering. That's him. President Kennedy and Anne. Oh, it's you, Winston. He hasn't been fighting. Don't be too hard on him, Michael. These boys, they've been fighting for the defense of their new neighbors. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't... He'll quite... explain. I can't stay. Got to get these other fellows home. See you around, man. See ya. Now, look here, you. There'll be no more pocket money and no treats until Christmas. If I catch you out when you should be studying... And what have you done to your face? Steady on, Susan. Tony's going to be all right. God bless President Kennedy and the Russians too, for that matter. Mum, it's going to be all right. I know, love, it's on the television. Michael, the Russian ships have changed course. Russia wants a summit meeting. It's going to be all right. Defending your new neighbours, eh, lad? Ah, well, even presidents have trouble with neighbours from time to time. No nuclear war then, Dad. Not for the time being, son. Not by the sound of it. The conflict of arms is no longer felt to be a solution to the Cuban question. To support this series of How We Used to Live has been published by A and C Black, priced at five pounds ninety-five, and is available.